Hi, and welcome to my poster presentation about reproducible models in systems biology and why they're higher sighted and that they're higher sighted. So first of all, I tell you something about the background of our study. So we're, our study is based on the data set of Tivari et al, where they investigated 455 models in systems biology. And they try to reproduce these models and try to reproduce a figure of the publications of these models. And you see only every second model in their study was directly reproducible. Out of these 49% which were not directly reproducible, they tried to reproduce the models with empirical corrections or with the support of the authors, so they contacted the authors. But still, 37% of the models could not be reproduced at all. So we compared these directly reproducible models against the non-reproducible models at all. So what does reproducibility here mean? So we have here non-reproducibility at the very lowest step of the stage up to reusable models. So non-reproducible models are completely individualized and the documentation is missing, so you cannot reproduce them. Repeatable models, on the other hand, they have some documentation and the uh, original code, but you cannot reproduce it in a different software environment. Then you have reproducibility within the same working group, so the missing information here you would need to transfer it to another software environment is already present here in the group without explicitly written that. And on a higher step, you have reproducibility, and reproducibility here and in the definition of Tivari at all means that you can use the code and put it in a different software environment from the original and produce this code de novo. And reusability is even one step higher for us, so this means you can really reuse the models, you can make a model extension, model coupling, and so on. And this is where we say that there is impact in it and there is also the benefit which we think we have found in an increased citation count. So we analyzed these two groups with a method that's, that is called Bayesian estimation. So you can see here the best method, Bayesian estimation, supersedes the t-test from John K. Kruschke et al. And um, you see we have a prior here for the parameters of a non-central t-distribution here in red. And we fit this non-central t-distribution to each data set we investigate. So we try to estimate the posterior distributions of these two non-central t-distributions here via MCMC sampling. So we draw a mu parameter for both data sets independently, also a sigma parameter for these data sets independently, and the shape parameter is always shared by the two data sets. The shape parameter here decides if the non-central t-distribution is more heavy-tailed or more normal distribution-like. Here you can see the posterior distributions, and based on these posterior distributions, you can evaluate it via the posterior predictive distributions. And you see, if the difference of means is 95% of the highest density, highest density values indicate a difference of the means larger than zero, then you have a significant difference in the underlying means of the two groups. And you can also have a look here, of course, in the effect size, which tells you something about how large the effect is in terms of standard deviations. So the benefits of these methods are a quite efficient outlier handling via the non-central t-distribution and a more, um, more sound reasoning in terms of probability distributions than of sampling distributions in frequentist statistics. So here's the result of our study. And you see 10 years after the introduction of SPML, the reproducible models got credibly more citations. So these 10 years after the introduction of SPML is 2013, and we investigated multiple time periods. You see here the reproducible models on the x-axis and the non-reproducible models on the y-axis. And we always investigated the time periods up to the year 2020. So here, 
2010 would mean that we investigate all models starting 2010 to publish 2020. And you see starting 2013 we have always more than 95% credibility for a higher citation count of the reproducible model group. So you can see here the detailed comparison of the period 2013 and till 2020. So you can see here the posterior distributions of the parameters and here the posterior predictive distributions. And you see in the reproducible models got on average 3.4 citations more than the non-reproducible models. So in summary, the benefits of reproducible models and of this method is that results can be verified and falsified with reproducible models. We have promotion of the scientific field, which means you can easily reuse models and then you do not have to build each model from the beginning. You can also couple it to your models and use it as an input, for example. And you have an immediate benefit for the individual researcher in terms of you get more citations because others can reuse your models. And if they want to reuse your model, you get only a citations if they're able to do so. So thank you for your um, attention. And if you're now interested, here's the link to the publication. And I'm happy to discuss this with you at the poster session. Thanks.